He is a leader with passion. His mother's and father's influence on the importance of community really paved the way to his future career. He's a family man, an entrepreneur, and the mind behind the town of Orangeville. Since the young age of 24, he has dedicated his time to help enhance the township's way of life. His name is Mayor Rob Adams. He was just recently re-elected for his second term as mayor of Orangeville. Along with taking care of the community, he coaches his son's ice hockey team. Join me, Melissa Morris, as I talk one-on-one -on -one with Mayor Rob Adams right after this break. Welcome to this edition of One on One. I'm your host, Melissa Morris, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Orangeville Mayor Rob Adams. Thank you so much for joining us today. It's a pleasure, Melissa. Yes, thank you very much for being here. I want to start right from the beginning. We're going to go right back to your childhood to start off. Your father, Clark Adams, was heavily involved in the community as a uh, school trustee. Was his active involvement in the community something that inspired you later in life? Well. I would say absolutely, mm -hmm. but I couldn't leave out my mom. My dad was uh, on the school board and in Rotary Clubs and uh, really active in the community, mm -hmm. but my mother was also very active. She actually uh, started with some other ladies, the Clothing Depot, Information Bethpern, uh, the Crisis Center in town. So she was very active in the community. So I was basically brought up that you had a responsibility and obligation to give back to your community and to help others in your community. That was part of your social responsibility. So uh, it comes very naturally to me. I had very good role models and I still look up to both my mom and dad's role that they played in my life. And did they get you involved when you were young in certain community service initiatives? Ser serving roast beef at uh, the rotary mm. functions and uh, spending time with my mom at the stress center or helping her at the church basement uh, preparing meals and things. So that was all part of it as a kid growing up. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about your education. I know you went to uh, University of Western Ontario. Tell me what you did there and how that um, ended up contributing to what you do now. I uh, ended up going to Western and doing an economics and political science degree mm -hmm. and I enjoyed it so much that I went back again a second time and did a master's in public administration which is really a degree that people who run municipalities tend to uh, have but it's been of real benefit to me. Uh, it is unusual for a politician to have that kind of experience but mm -hmm. I've been able to use that experience and those tools to uh, be a better manager of the municipal council and the municipal organization. What was it like the first time you were elected as Orangeville's mayor? I mean, just from a personal standpoint, what was that feeling like the night of the election? Well, you're feeling a lot of things, Melissa. Yeah. You feel uh, real joy and excitement that uh, this group of people who have been on your campaign team have worked so hard mm -hmm. and you've achieved success so you're very excited and then very quickly the the weight and the responsibility of I'm in charge 
I have to look after a lot of people and I have to make very important decisions. Very quickly that comes in. Yeah. And so it's, it's a mix of both joy and excitement and, and the feeling of energy and being energized to want to accomplish things. And at the same time, in the back of your mind, that, that sense of responsibility, the, the duty, the obligation to do a good job for the people. Yeah. And what made you want to come back for a second term? Well, it, it never really got out of my blood. I, uh, I had, my wife and I had a little boy who was six, and so I needed to take some time off because um, he needed a little bit of my time. Mm -hmm. But he's a little older now and independent, and I was a little frustrated with the financial things that were happening in town and some of the direction. And I felt that I could make change and, and uh, fix some of those things that needed to be corrected. So I decided, uh, instead of complaining about it, I had an obligation. It's my community, and uh, I had a lot of people encourage me to run, and I decided I would do it for them. Did you always feel like this was something that you wanted to do? Uh, I wouldn't say so, mm -hmm. no. I. Uh, at one time, I thought I might get involved in federal politics mm -hmm. or provincial politics. And I, I really hadn't thought about municipal. But having experience in, in all three areas, I think municipal is the most exciting. Because I, I use the analogy, it's like being an entrepreneur. You can have a direct impact on people. You can directly affect their lives and solve problems for them easily. In the federal and provincial government, you're a cog working with a whole bunch of other people to try and make things happen, but there's a huge bureaucracy and it's very hard. At the town, if I get a phone call, someone has a problem, I can actually react to it, make something happen, find them a solution, and make my constituents happy. So it's very rewarding mm -hmm. because you have a, a closer relationship with the people mm -hmm. and you can react easily. And how do you feel about this community? I mean, you might, you, that's the thing is that you get to know these people so well. Well, Orangeville is such a dynamic community. Yeah. We have so many amazing things happening. Uh, we've got great artisans, amazing restaurants, mm -hmm. spectacular activities and events going on all throughout the year, and a, a really very vibrant, strong community spirit. We're outside of the GTA and the hustle and bustle of the city, and you get a real sense of family and a great place to raise a family, a small town community spirit. Even walking up the street, people look at you, smile, uh, even if they don't know you because it's just a friendly town. Yeah, it really is. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about you. We're going to talk a little bit more about the town as well. We're going to be right back after this short break. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll be right back on One on One. <laughs> Welcome back to One on One, where today we have the pleasure of being joined by the Mayor, Rob Adams. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, it's a pleasure. We were talking a little bit about your um, career in politics, and you um, had a term as councillor. You were working your way up through government before your first term in 1998. Tell us a little bit about what that experience is, was like and, and what it taught you. Well, it was interesting. I was uh, very young, mm -hmm. and uh, the members of council were all very veteran. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, uh, one of the gentlemen, Arnold Patterson, I turned to him and uh, said, I, I was born in 1963. He said, that's the year I was elected to council. Wow. <laughs> so there was a lot of experience, and I learned a lot. Mm -hmm. People like Arnold and Vic Large and Gord Courtney who was our mayor, uh, I learned an awful lot from them about being patient and about taking the right approaches and uh, how things should operate. Mm -hmm. And I observed uh, what they did and tried to build on their successes and their good ideas. Yeah. In all the years that you've been involved um, with uh, Orangeville, how has it changed? Well, it's gone from being, uh, when I was a kid growing up, there were 2,500 people. It was a sleepy little yeah. village and it, it's grown over the years mm -hmm. um, some of the growth has been very good some has created some issues that we've had to deal with in the town but mm -hmm. uh, it's 
created opportunity. It's given people more variety in restaurants and food and shopping. Mm -hmm. uh, it's given them more employment opportunities. So there have been a lot of benefits to it over the years. And uh, you want to see that positive change takes place when it does. And in the case of Orangeville, it's been very positive. Yeah. What about the town is very important to you? Well, the town is uh, just so historic. It, uh, yeah. The downtown is an amazing part of our history and culture uh, as a community. And so that is really vibrant for, for the town. Mm -hmm. As well, some of the new areas, some of the newer developments have uh, brought people from other areas, and that adds something to the mix as well. Yeah. And through all this time, you've been so busy. You have also uh, managed to run your own business, Campus Coolers. Tell yes. us a little bit about that business. Well, uh, what we do, we lease and rent uh, appliances. Mm -hmm. And probably the best example is we rent fridges to university students across Canada and on the eastern seaboard of the U.S. Wow. So it's... So uh, how many universities would you say? Uh, we do about 30 universities. Really? Yes. So it's a busy time in September, and uh, yeah. my friends joke around, they call me the fridge magnet. <laughs> <laughs> fridge magnet. <laughs> well, speaking of your friends, your friends um, have told us that um, it is virtually impossible to get you mad, that you are about as level-headed uh, as it gets. What do you think of that? That's very true. Yeah. Yeah. I don't get uh, angry very often. I let everything roll off, and... Uh, I'm a very pragmatic person, yeah. and uh, I always see the good and the positive, and I guess I'm a big optimist, so yeah. I, I just don't let things at the moment worry me. That's very true. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice compliment, too, I well, would think. thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you um, certainly emulate a lot of your father's work in your uh, community service. What do you think is important about giving back to the community? Well, I think there are a variety of things. One, uh, we're on earth to mm -hmm. help our fellow woman and man. Mm -hmm. That's that's our role here. And uh, uh, as well, we need to be role models for other young people in the community, including my kids and other kids. We need to set an example so that they care for our, the people who are less fortunate, maybe down on their luck, or need our help at a certain period of time. Because we'll all face at some point uh, needing someone's help mm -hmm. and uh, if we give back to the community it just makes us stronger and the reward really is in the giving mm -hmm. that's the important part and do you feel that your children are, are also learning from that experience are you sort of passing the torch <laughs> yeah they get involved in various things and uh, they're learning when we're when we're doing heart and stroke uh, uh, canvassing or participating in the Terry Fox fund which my one son did um, we we teach them by example of, of what they should do when they're older as well. And we talk about it a lot around the, uh, around the dinner table at home. Excellent. Well, we're so. going to talk a lot more about your family and your career. We'll be right back. Thanks very much for joining us. We'll be right back here with Mayor Rob Adams when we come back on One on One. <laughs> Welcome back to this edition of One on One, where today we are joined by Orangeville's Mayor Rob Adams. Rob, thank you so much for being here today. We um, were talking a little bit about your family, and you know, aside from leading the citizens of, of Orangeville every day, you also take on the huge role and responsibility within your family. And anyone who knows you says that this is a really important and um, admirable thing about you. How do you manage to balance your family life? You have four children. How do you balance your family life with all the work that you do? Well, I, my parents, once again, were great role models in yeah. letting me know. My dad was a very successful lawyer. My mom was very busy volunteering, but they always had time to make our hockey games, make our soccer games, be there for us. Uh, I know my dad would come home. He was always home for dinner. And he, he'd head back to the office after we were in bed and, and things like that. But he always made a point of having family time. And for me growing up, dinner was the time that we interacted, talked about our problems, um, really as a family unit grew together. Mm -hmm. And so for me, it, it comes naturally. And my kids are such an important part of my life. Mm -hmm. And my wife and I, we just love the time we spend with them. So we... We do everything we can to uh, uh, spend our time with, 
with our kids and that family time is so important. And how, um, how busy is your family? Are they busy, your children? We're very busy, yeah. yes. That's not to say we can every night get together I for was, dinner. I was going to say, that must be a little hard to schedule with yes, four kids. Yes, yes. My oldest son plays competitive AAA hockey, and then I have a son and a daughter who are twins, and one of them dances competitively, my daughter, and my son plays AAA hockey in the city as well. And then I have a little boy who's six, and he's into gymnastics and hockey and all those things. So we're go, go, go. There uh, are a lot of activities happening in our, ki in our town. Yeah. And uh, so we're on the go all the time. That's great. And I understand you've also taken on the role as head coach yes. for the hockey team, too. Yes. I coached my six-year-old son uh, this past winter, past couple of winters. And in the past, I coached uh, my older boy and my middle boy as well. Really? And do you yeah. think these um, these roles sort of help you day to day in your work as mayor? I mean, you're managing little people all the time, so. Yeah, well, the reason I wanted to coach was yeah. I, I really felt that for an hour, I could be a positive role model mm -hmm. in the kids' lives. And uh, I could teach them a little bit about the things I'd learned in hockey. I had some great coaches. Uh, guys like Dan Stone and, and uh, Mr. Davies and uh, a whole host of great coaches. And so once again, it was about giving back. Mm -hmm. And uh, I love to coach hockey. It's a lot of fun. I've coached from house league to AAA hockey, and uh, all of it is a lot of fun. Other than politics, what are you most passionate about? Um, probably family mm -hmm. and uh, then uh, sporting activities. Uh, I really love coaching hockey. It, it's, uh, it's a passion. Um, having four kids, you have to share your time. So I have to pick my moments when I can coach. But I really enjoyed it. I've had uh, some good success coaching and uh, had some great kids I've coached over the years. So I think maybe when I have more time out of politics, I'd probably do more coaching again. And do you feel like your children understand what you do? Do they really support you, rally around you? Yeah, my kids were great. It's always tough in the relationship when your dad's the coach of a hockey team. Yeah. But my kids were excellent at understanding the relationship and being supportive in that role. And really, there were no problems with that. They were good kids. Excellent. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about them and a little bit more about you as well yeah. when we come back here on One on One with our guest today, Rob Adams. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to One on One, where today we are joined by Orangeville's Mayor Rob Adams. And Rob, you were born and raised in this area in Orangeville. Um, tell us what you love most about living, sort of, you were mentioning before, it's outside of the city. So what do you like about living outside of the city? Well, I, I remember, I have so many good memories of Orangeville growing up as a kid, playing in uh, quiet laneways and playing road hockey with other kids on the street. and the big beautiful trees and uh, just so many great memories about Orangeville growing up. But really it's the people, Melissa. The, the people that you meet are so friendly. You walk down Broadway and from one end to the other you probably get 10 hellos and friendly smiles and, and people are just very friendly and engaging. And they're not afraid to talk to you and ask direction and there's that sense of things are safe in Orangeville. Mm -hmm. Things are safe, it's a good community, and uh, people are very friendly. That's what really gives it its special spirit. And don't you find in this area, and, and I, I see it everywhere I go around here, that everybody seems to know everybody else some way or another. Everybody kind of seems connected somehow. Yeah, that's, that's a real advantage, because yeah. if something happened to you, you know that there would be lots of people jumping in to help you out. Yeah. And it's a really nice feeling. It's a feeling of being connected mm -hmm. with the people who live in your community and having a lot of friends. Yeah, so it's, it's true. It's that is wonderful. what it feels like. Everybody feels like friends. Yes, exactly. So what do you think makes this area so unique? I think Orangeville is unique because of the geography. Yeah. Um, it's just, uh, as you drive out of the city, you start to get uh, the bigger trees, the greener fields, the rolling hills, and then
then as you come over the brow of the hill there nestled in the valley is Orangeville mm -hmm. and it just has a real sense of a peaceful quiet cozy town and uh, a, and then the friendly spirit of all the people in the community make it a great uh, a great center but but we have so much to offer with all the artisans and the restaurants mm -hmm. and uh, community activities there's just a lot to do here well, and now that you're in your second term as mayor, what do you see uh, for the future in Orangeville? Well, we have some challenges as or in Orangeville. Uh, financially, we need to uh, be very prudent and fiscally responsible. But if we can do that, and if we can work hard at attracting industry, um, we're going to have a very uh, prosperous community. As well, I'd like to have the community try to work hard at trying to uh, promote greenery and the environment. I think those are top priorities. And that's everything from trailways to walking paths to bike paths and uh, sustainability. Mm -hmm. And are there any projects on the go right now that are um, working to that end? Well, we have an absolutely terrific trailways committee, which has just come up with an overall master plan for Orangeville. We're uh, just initiating a plan to look at bike lanes throughout the community. And uh, we're making connections to those trails, to the Trans Canada, to the Bruce Trail, so that people in town can make those connections very easily. What do you think other towns could learn from Orangeville? I think they could learn that uh, you have to uh, be responsible as a community for uh, promoting yourself for uh, being responsible environmentally. Mm -hmm. um, and I think they could learn uh, about how to promote artisans, uh, your downtown, your theater. Uh, I think we've done a tremendous job at those things. So I think other communities, and they quite often do, come to visit Orangeville to pick up ideas on our success. Yeah, and what are some of your personal goals for the short term? Well, fiscal responsibility is going to be number one. Yeah. But I really want to see the development of the trail system within the community and a very strong uh, economic development presence in the community so that we're growing our industry. And then finally, uh, it would be sort of the environment, wanting to make sure that the footprint, the ecological footprint that we have in Orangeville is a very responsible one and that we can maybe lead the way in the province as far as uh, greenery. And you've done a great job with that, so thank you very much. And thank you so much for joining us here today, Rob, on One on One. It's been a real pleasure meeting you. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure too, Melissa. And thank you very much for joining us today on this edition of One on One. I'm your host, Melissa Morris. We'll see you next time. One on One was taped on location at the Millcroft Inn and Spa, which features award-winning dining and accommodations and state-of-the-art European-style spa.